Welcome everyone to Gender Equality Talks Season 2 hosted by CNS. In these talks, we hear from people on the front lines striving for gender justice worldwide. Global voices demanding that progress must be on track to deliver the SDGs by 2030. In these talks, we cover a wide range of issues around gender justice. We have with us today, Darvesh Singh Yadavendra, gay rights activist from India. Welcome Yadavendra, pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you, thank you Sumita so much and thank you to CNS for such a warm welcome. Yadavendra has been working on rights of sexual minorities over two decades. He runs the Pehel Foundation, a community-based organization for gay rights and rights of the transgender community. He's been associated with India's National AIDS Control Program as a resource person. Yadavendra is also a photographer and a filmmaker. His documentaries on the queer community have been screened at international conferences. He's exhibited his photographs in Lucknow. He's helped organize queer events in Lucknow, such as the Pride Walk, film festivals, and even a queer literature festival. Amazing. Thank you. Great. That's absolutely fabulous, Yadavendra. Just amazing to see the very wide range of work that you've done on advancing gender uh, justice. So uh, given that we are on the midpoint of the SDGs, we would really like to hear from you. Uh, what are, are your views? Do you think the world is on track to deliver SDG 5 for gender equality? Uh, well, hi. Uh, once again, thank you so much. So, uh, in my view, uh, there has been a significant efforts uh, that have been made to promote gender equality, and it is, uh, and but it's still a hard fact that the progress towards this goal has been very uneven, and it is not, it and it's very insufficient, and we need to understand the various aspects around gender equality, such as like uh, access to education, economic empowerment. Uh, political representation and obviously ending of the uh, gender-based violence. Uh, so these are the some of the areas that still require substantial uh, attention and action. So uh, if if we come to the context, like in uh, when you talk in the context of India, uh, particularly or South Asia, when we say, so uh, like in India, we have uh, a progress made, but it's still it's lack a lot. Like, for example, one example that I would like, like to give that in India, we have a national education policy that has come up, uh, 2020. Now, in this national education policy, there is a concept of gender inclusion fund. So this particular gender inclusion fund, it talks about girl child, as well as very interestingly, it is for the first time that the government has mentioned about the transgender children also. So this particular uh, concept of gender, uh, gender inclusion fund is there. But the point is that, yes, we have the policy, but where is the action? Uh, where is the action? Are the state governments, because education is mainly the state subject, are the state government making any efforts towards achieving this, the objects of the gender inclusion fund? Sadly, no. Uh, so it should not remain just in, in, the, in the policy document, but we need to a lot of take actions. And how this action has to be done. So, uh, so for this, we have to, again, education, as a, we, we look at the holistic uh, approach, then still we have a barrier such as poverty. We have a barrier such as uh, 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 cultural norms, right? We have a barrier in the terms of whether queer population are getting adequate support uh, in their schools, right? Is there, are there provision of the counselors there? Or does the policy of the uh, 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 school or around bullying of the queer people is it there? Sadly, it is still not there. We have seen that uh, in my uh, in my work with the committee people. I have seen that a lot of people they tend to leave their uh, school like in class eight or tenth. They are not able to continue. They have been bullied. They have been uh, physically harassed. They have been sexually harassed just because they do not conform to the societal gender norms. So they, even if they, they are, uh, they are feminine, there have been a lot of uh, comments on their femininity. Uh, and, and when they approached teachers or the management, they say, the fault is with you. When other kids are like this, then why you can't behave like them? When they come to the family, for family, it's a matter of shame that you are bringing such a bad thing to it. Where will we go? What, what 
what face will we show our, to the to the uh, to our communities to our society? Recently, uh, I mean, a, a few years back, there was a young kid in Faridabad DPS who committed suicide because he was being bullied for his feminine nature, right? And it's still uh, such an elite school is still the case is going on. The mother is not being able to receive the justice. So we can see. The, the kind of uh, the thing is there. Then another coming to the another uh, aspect of gender equality when we talk about this, economic empowerment, right? So how many have we seen from the queer people are uh, there in the part of the skill development programs of the government of India? Government of India runs passionately with the skill development. Huge money is being given to develop uh, skills of young people. But where is the queer representation in that, right? The, uh, the, the NGOs, the civil societies, or, or any of the private companies who are taking up these projects, are they sensitized enough to understand this or not? So that is another very, very important uh, this thing. And also queer people have very limited access to financial resources, right? So and or to the- Limited yeah. access to? Limited but, access to? Uh, financial resources. Right. Right. That, yeah, and the uh, entrepreneur opportunities. So there are schemes like uh, Mudra Loan and all that is there for the government of India. But is the company able to access those kind of opportunities? Then another very important aspect I would like to highlight is about the political representation, right? Political representation is very critical to make sure that our voices are heard. But again, the thing is very, very, uh, it presents a very sad picture. Right, all the major political parties, they do not have any, hardly any people who are out and open to talk about it, right, about the issues. So that is very, very important. How to ensure that the political representation, equal representation of the queer people in this whole uh, decision-making process is, is, uh, is exists. So uh, I would say that the efforts are being made, but those efforts have to be translated into action, which is totally missing. How we are going to do that because already more than half of the time has passed, right? And still, if I see foresee a future, I do not see anything concrete that is happening. So still, we have a long, long way to go to achieve this gender equality by 2030. I mean, there has to be continued commitment. There has to be a coordinated actions. There has to be investment in the communities in the policies and the programs at all levels, be it global level, national level, local levels. And everybody has to come together, be it government, civil societies, business, media houses, individuals who are working to make the whole world more inclusive and gender responsive. So that as the motto goes, that no one is left behind. Excellent, lovely. So many things you touched upon, so many issues yes. you've raised from, uh, political representation of the queer community to you know ensuring that when a policy is there it's actually translating into action yes it's very important yeah. lack of financial resources for the queer community economic empowerment counseling in schools excellent really uh, nice and wonderful that you've raised so many diverse issues so, so these are so many of the challenges that you're saying and also that you know progress has been made but it's uneven so yeah. You know, and half the time has already gone. We have half the time left. Um, you, you know, told us about some of the challenges that are there. What do you think? You know, we should be doing right now to ensure that uh, you know we are making good progress. What would you propose? See, yeah. Uh, so uh, for me, I mean, uh, one thing is very critical that it's a time for to have legal reforms in our case. So the country has progressed in the sense that we have now such a statement of 2014, we talk, which uh, made transgender community as an equal citizen of this country. Then we had a right to privacy judgment, uh, which was followed by the reading down of section 377 of Indian Penal Code. And the government came up with a, a TG Act uh, to make sure that the transgender people are equally represented in all respects. And there is no discrimination, but it's still, I feel that we have, as far as legal reforms are concerned, we still have a very, very long way to go. As you are aware that um, there's a debate in the Supreme Court around marriage equality. And the stand that government has taken is, uh, is very critical. It's very critical in the sense that it, it reflects that how tough the battle is going to be, right? And it's, it reflects the mindset of the government that 
the government is still is is kind of uh, stuck somewhere like the definition of family, the definition of marriage. The government is not willing to evolve it to understand that there could be different uh, uh, types of families. The institution of marriage needs to be broadened to include the aspirations of every young couple, of queer people. So it is very, very important. And, and as far as legal reform is concerned, we need to have, uh, very importantly, to have a very comprehensive anti-discrimination uh, laws that will protect individuals on the basis of their sexual orientation, gender identity, uh, gender expression, right? So, so, the, so there is a push for same-sex relationships and then also, we need to talk about adoption rights. We need to talk about inheritance rights. So, so we need to make amendments so that the, the laws, also the existing laws are, which are there, do not perpetuate discrimination. So it is very important. And the second aspect uh, about, uh, around it, how we can go about this, is about the awareness and sensitization. So it is very kind of a term like the uh, when section 377 judgment was out the, the the judiciary made it very clear to the government to the civil societies to the media that it is collective responsibility of everyone to come together and conduct these targeted awareness campaigns and sensitization campaigns at all levels whether it is schools colleges you talk about workplace you talk about committees because it is very important to promote understanding of diverse sexual orientations and gender identities. And we have to challenge the stereotypes, right? We have to challenge the misconceptions. We have to kind of uh, develop a climate that would foster acceptance and inclusion. Another important aspect which I touched earlier was to have the inclusive education, right? So uh, talking about sexuality is gender very critical when we, uh, there are professional courses like legal, like law. Like the person who is doing LLB or LLM or the, or the person who is doing doctorate, uh, doctor becoming. Uh, uh, uh. So it is very important for them at that level to make them understand the issues of around gender and sexuality. And along with this higher education, it is very important that the, the gender education uh, should start in the schools. Uh, students from class six onwards should be made as age appropriate education needs to be given to them. So that right from the beginning, they develop this understanding that yes, to develop an inclusive environment, to have to be inclusive is something very, very important for their overall personality development. Another very important aspect uh, that, that can be touched upon is about the healthcare and the support services. So still, uh, we have uh, HIV programs which are uh, kind of community sensitive, but what about other programs? There are major programs that have been run by the a national health mission. Where is the place for the queer people in those programs? None. Unfortunately, there is none. There is a need for SRS services. But is there anything for queer people, especially for the trans people? Sadly, there is none. They are forced to visit quacks, which again aggregates their health problems. It is very, very important that not only HIV programs, but other uh, uh, health programs which are run by national health mission they should be, uh, the healthcare provider should be encouraged to undergo trainings on LGBT specific healthcare needs and sensitivities, right? We need to establish uh, uh, LGBT friendly healthcare centers and include, and very important that we have to ensure the availability of the mental health support center, which is very, very important. Uh, and when you touch about the mental health, I would like to bring, highlight one point that, the, that we have this mental health uh, act uh, in India, which categorically prohibits uh, your uh, uh, counseling on, on, on sexual orientation, your uh, therapies around sexual orientation, conversion therapies around sexual orientation. It explicitly prohibits. But the point is that people are not aware of it, right? We have seen cases coming from very small towns where kids are being forced by their parents to visit the hospitals, to undergo treatment, so that the gender identity, their uh, sexual orientation gets changed. And, and these psychiatrists, these practicing psychiatrists and psychologists, they are charging huge money for it. Uh, they are making it a business. The parents do not understand uh, that, that it is something which they have to accept. It, it cannot be changed. You know? 
but still the law is there but again as i said earlier the implementation of that, that law is how we are going to do it. that is very important another very important when we talk of commit that that following this point is about the family support right we do not have any uh, programs uh, per se that will address the fears of the family when a child comes out as a as a gay person or as a lesbian woman or as a trans person families are the first point where they experience the violence and and that affects their mental health a lot because we all see that family is a place where where people accept where people get love where people get acceptance where people have a dignity but the state institution when it attacks your your core value to your core value it becomes very very problem with the with the kids that grow up uh, to have the trust issues with others right because the family is not given the love which is expected so it's become very difficult you know so it is very important that a program should be there to educate the families to educate the communities and there are a lot of myths and stereotypes and and so all these things to be uh, uh, addressed though in india we have uh, uh, like kind come up with a support group for parents but that is kind of situated in like mumbai and delhi what about other places india is not mumbai and delhi india lies in very smaller towns it's still absolutely right? fully agree absolutely yeah. so, so where is uh, yeah. this thing we do not have those networks for the parents and families because parents also it comes as a shock to them right. where they go they don't have they don't know have the means to yeah to to know yeah to understand and yeah we say that we is a world of social media they can go but social media will give you all kind of information the positive and negative where is the authentic sources unless it comes from the government like the government if uh, the government comes and says no lgbt are part of the society it will make a huge difference if celebrities come and Absolutely. they say Yes. it makes a huge difference yeah those who celebrities if media covers the article regularly and talks about it with photographs and you know so that that will help in addressing these barriers right excellent yeah there is so uh, you know as you know the women deliver conference is happening in kigali rwanda later this month one of the yeah. largest conferences uh, around uh, you know gender equality uh, what are your expectations from this conference so uh, see uh, for me uh, gender equality for lgbt people is a very critical aspect or achieving the overall gender equality and uh, fulfilling the principles of human rights and social justice uh, we need to acknowledge the challenges yes there are challenges but yes we sh also should applaud the efforts that are Absolutely. being being done by all the stakeholders whether it is the government the media civil societies you know so we need to applaud those efforts and we have to come together it is not a collective effort that collective yeah. effort is needed to I raise awareness it. yeah to talk about advocacy to talk about policy reforms and 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 we have to continue this to foster the inclusive societies yes right? so that the the people with all sexual orientations are not just saying lgbt but all sexual orientations all gender identities all gender expressions can come together live with dignity free from discrimination and free from prejudice so we have i mean we have to remember that promoting gender equality is a shared responsibility shared responsibility right? yes it's a shared responsibility yes. that requires active participation and support of the government the media institutions civil societies communities and individuals so by coming together working together we can create this beautiful world which is inclusive which is equitable where every individual regardless of their sex sexuality gender sexual orientation can thrive and contribute fully to our society thank you very much yadavendra so many uh, you know lovely to hear your insights and uh, so much food for thought that you've given thank us you. thank you, you so much listening. to gender equality talks hosted by cns featuring darbesh singh yadavendra gay rights activist from india until next time thank you for listening and participating in this dialogue to demand progress for sdg 5 on gender equality bye 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 take care